Tom and Divolo Kogi State. Yes, my name is Komita Gara Godwin. You have been here for long. Thank you, Chief. Chief, 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 In today's video, we are going to analyze the recent tussle between the richest man in Africa, Alaja Ali Kodankote, and the Kogi state government led by Yahaya Bello, also known as the White Lion. Well, if you didn't know, yes, he's called White Lion. Dangote's biggest cement factory, located in Obajana, Kogi state, was recently shut down by the state government for claims that the cement company belongs to the state government and not to the Dangote group. Well, I'm sure that you know who Dangote is, but just in case you don't know, he is the richest black man on the planet. Most of his wealth actually comes from his cement company and he owns the largest cement company in Sub-Sahara Africa. The Obajana cement plant located in Obajana Kogi State is the biggest among all of his cement plants in Africa with about 16.9 metric ton capacity across five lines of limestone transportation. I've actually done a full documentary on this place and if you haven't watched that video, you can actually check it out on the description. On October 5, the Smith company was actually shut down by the Kogi state government on allegation that the Smith company does not belong to Dangote but to them. I However, there was some kind of intervention from the federal government which instructed that the place be opened back again. As at the time of this video, the Kogi state government have actually filed a suit against the company regarding the allegation. Assuming the Kogi state government actually wins this case in court, does it mean that Dangote will lose his second biggest investment? Well, not really. But first of all, let's actually really understand the issue here. From the available report online, in 1992, Kogi State Government registered Obajana Cement PLDC as Public Limited Liability Company. But this company only existed on paper with no infrastructure on ground. However, in 2002, the Kogi State Government approached Dangote to establish its main company in Kogi State, given that the state has an abundant limestone used for making of cement. But also with the caveat that Dangote Group will operate with the already registered name Obajana Cement PLDC. Part of the agreement was that Dangote will also source fund to build the factory and get seven year tax free from the state government, while the state government will buy a share of 5% from the said company. This is all we know so far regarding the deal, however, it looks like it was a bad deal, but a deal is a deal. After the said deal was done, according to Dangote Company, they actually purchased a land to begin its operation and they fully paid for the land and got the certificate of occupancy from the government before building the factory in 2003. However, it seems that the Kogi State government did not get its 5% share as promised, given that when they are supposed to buy the share from the Dangote Smith, they could not meet up with the request. And now, as it stands, Dangote claims 100% ownership of the cement company. On the other side, the Kogi State government have claimed that its original deal gave it 10% of the company's share. Additionally, they also claim that the deal that was done by the previous state government was never ratified by the State House of Assembly and therefore makes the deal void. Well, I'm not really sure how that will hold up in the court of law. But much more, the state government is actually accusing Dangote Group for not doing enough to support the host community given the health and environmental hazard their operation posed to the habitants of the company. In fact, they claim that the Dangote Group has not done any significant social intervention in the community. Okay, so here is a summary of my take regarding this tussle. I believe that the state government is pushing to get Dangote to pay its dividends and has been a shareholder in the company. However, worst case scenario, even if the state government was to lose the case and not get its 10% share or 5% share, it will at least make a case that the Dangote group will be able to pay the host community through the state, you know, uh, compensation for the environmental hazard 
that the oppression of the mining is causing to the host community so this is what i really see playing because it seems like whatever agreement that they had earlier on did not really consider the hazard that the oppression of the place will cause to the host community because it looks like that was never captured in the agreement and if that is the case it's really a shitty agreement like donald trump will really say okay so that truly is my take for me i think it's a good fight if they get your five percent or ten percent share that is great if they don't and they can be able to get compensation paid to the host community or get the dangote group to do more for the host community that is also great i only hope that if the state government wins for instance and get the ten percent share which will really be huge and make a lot of difference in the igr of the state i only hope that it will be used to develop the state because as it stands today Koki State needs lots of development because I can tell you it is one of the least developed states in Nigeria. I mean, you can check out my videos and see the road infrastructure and the places, man, it's nothing to really, really, you know, talk about. So I believe that it will be a good thing for them because they will really need to use lots of money. However, do you also know that as it stands today, Koki State is also an oil producing state? <laughs> well if you didn't know that they know that so actually they're actually getting a lot of money right now i only hope that the politicians of today who are in the helm of affairs will really use the resources they are having to develop their state so that that can also trickle down to the populace okay so that's what i have for you in this video these are my opinion and these opinions are based on the researches and information i got online it does not represent that of the state or does not represent that of dangote group i don't support any of them i'm not a shareholder i don't get anything from them <laughs> i'm just trying to make this information known because i realized i watched the video online and many people are saying ah dangote meant give us back our company people don't even understand the facts and they're just talking but these are the facts based on what the both parties are actually saying if you're meeting for the first time i create a lot of travel and documentary content on this channel if you want to learn a lot more about nigeria and adventures in nigeria please check out the content that we have you really like them and if you do subscribe to the channel turn up your post notifications so you can see the content when we drop them and finally for those of you who are actually been expecting the app that i talked about you really need to have if you want to live and travel around nigeria because that app can literally save you from kidnapping from am robbery and all of that that video is still coming i still putting it together and so shortly you're going to be getting the video so just bear with us if you've been expecting that video and you haven't seen it it's going to drop very very soon so make sure your notification is turned up so you get to see it when it's dropped that's it on this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see why am i talking so fast <laughs> and i'll see you on the very next episode okay.